sorry. Thank you, Dr. Shweta, for including me in this um, session on basics of oculoplastic surgery. Okay, so I'm going to be talking about the ups and downs of TOSA surgery. So the aims of TOSI surgery um, is to lift up the lid, create a dynamic fold, and then bring it down so that we can close and protect the eye. It sounds quite simple, but it's not always uh, as simple. So I'll take an example. This was a 28-year-old 28, 28 uh, gentleman with a, a history of trauma and um, um, uh, severe ptosis. Um, I did a large LPS resection and there was absolutely no correction. So what, what went wrong? So the decisions on TOSIS surgery are quite a few. The most important is which procedure to do. Should we go for an LPS procedure? Should we go for a sling procedure? Or should we do some uh, smaller procedure like a Fasanella Servat? So how do we decide this? The first thing we have to look at is, is it a congenital or an acquired case? A congenital LPS is a dystrophic LPS. It won't, um, uh, it neither contracts to lift up the lid and does not even relax well. So there is um, always a lag of thalmus. And um, acquired LPS is, uh, uh, acquired ptosis will have a normal LPS with a normal action. Then the amount of ptosis. Uh, mild, moderate, and severe, knowing that a severe ptosis, um, the LPS proce uh, procedures are not going to work well. The cause of the ptosis is important, whether it's traumatic, aponeurotic, neurological. In a neurological case, we would like to use a procedure which is reversible. Then the LPS action, also very important to uh, know whether it's fair, good, or poor. Again, a poor LPS action is definitely going to need a sling procedure. And then unilateral or bilateral. So in the same patient, um, I then did a sling surgery. And uh, the lesson here is that you have to measure the LPS action. You must look for more signs. Don't go only on the history of that it is a traumatic case. The patient may have already had a pre-existing ptosis and is attributing it to the trauma. So some of the common complications that are seen, the most common is undercorrection. But we can also get overcorrection, asymmetric or poor lid fold. And in slings, we can get extrusions and infection. The dangerous complication and the ones that we absolutely don't want to see, which can compromise visual function, is exposure keratopathy, sometimes exposure just causing a corneal abrasion, or um, entropion or ectropion, which again can impact the corneal functions. So coming to the commonest one, why under correction? One, of course, is the wrong choice of pro uh, procedure. And I'm going to just highlight um, uh, the techniques and how we can prevent um, the complications by using a good um, technique. So in LPS resection, we must realize that the planning and preparation is very important. We must distinguish it between the congenital and acquired. And one of the good ways of distinguishing is the uh, palpable aperture in the down gaze in a congenital because of the dystrophic muscle. It does not go down, so there is a larger palpable aperture in the down gaze as compared to the acquired or the aponeurotic ptosis where there is a smaller palpable aperture in the down gaze. The amount of ptosis, LPS action, and is there any history of a previous surgery? Because in a previous surgery, there is going to be an increased lag of thalmus and lid lag, so we must be prepared for that. So in the surgical technique, um, the levator surgery, most important is to identify the LPS correctly. And our biggest landmark here is that once you uh, open the septum, you will see the pad of fat. The pad of fat lies just above the um, LPS, which is seen, the aponeurosis is seen as a glistening um, structure just below the pad of fat. So it's very important to identify it correctly so that you can then separate it nicely, both anteriorly and posteriorly. So here we're separating it from the conjunctiva, and you can even infiltrate the conjunctiva to form the plane of separation. The next question is how much to resect, amount of resection. I found that the Whitnall's ligament is a very good uh, landmark. 
And if you uh, don't identify the Wittnall's ligament, which is a glistening structure between the muscular and the aponeurotic part of the LPS, um, anything less than that, you're not going to get a good correction. So you must at least resect up to the Wittnall's ligament. And depending on the amount of ptosis, you can even go more than that. There are various nomograms on how much to resect. But I think in each surgeon's hand, it just works a little differently. I actually go by position at the end of the surgery. In the congenital uh, ptosis, I would like to leave it at the limbus, knowing that it is going to come down by 0.5 to 1 millimeter. And in the acquired ptosis, or where there is a good LPS action, I like to leave it about 0.5 millimeter or 1 millimeter below the limbus, because in the good LPS action or acquired, it is going to lift a little bit. Another problem that we do face is a notching on an asymmetric contour. And even if we get a good lift, if we're going to get a notch, we are not going to get a good cosmesis. And the patient is not going to be happy. So the way to prevent this is by keeping your sutures. In the LPS, we do three sutures. They must be equidistant, and they must be passed at the same level. Now, if you pass either more anterior or posterior, you're going to get a notch. And similarly, you must tie them also at the same level. Otherwise, you're going to end up with a notch. And before you uh, complete your surgery, you must always tighten and see the contour and so that you can reapply the suture if it's not good, good, looking good enough. Coming to sling surgery, how do we prevent the complications of the sling surgery? It's important to be at the correct depth so that you can get um, a good lift without any bunching. Most of us use the Fox triangle. And you can, some people have three incisions, some have two. That is, again, a personal uh, preference. The incision should be three to four millimeters from the um, lid margin if you want to get a good lift. And these uh, incisions that you are making should be of a correct depth, just up to the tarsal plate. The Forehead one incision is, uh, should the one right on top, this needs to be deep with a pocket. Now this is a silicone sling. Um, I, I cut it in half and use the same needle to go all, all, all the way through. So these um, need to be passed um, not too superficial and not too deep. And you need to come out just at the epitarsis, just uh, above the tarsus. is going just above the tarsus. And before, you should have marked a, a point in the middle where, where you get the maximum lift of the lid, which may not be exactly in the center. So after you've passed the sutures, the sling, you must always check for contour. And then um, you use the silicone sleeve for tightening it. And here you must check for contour before you tighten it. And the last knot needs to be buried deeply inside um, the pocket that you have created. So under correction in sling surgeries or the complications are more related to technique and not so much to the um, um, actual material. And if you do you reuse these slings, there is chances of more complications. The lag of thalmus and exposure keratopathy is not so much in fascia lata and silicone slings because there is some elasticity. It was more in the earlier sutures that were used. So by a good technique and using fascia lata, most of these uh, complications can be avoided. Um, Overcorrection in, uh, congenital, in congenital ptosis is very rare, but it does happen. So this is one case where um, uh, LPS resection was done, and there was a very large overcorrection. With massage and uh, using traction sutures, it was brought down somewhat. But she needed um, a re-surgery. We had to do a tenotomy. So in going back, in retrospect, we felt that um, this was probably a congenital aponeurotic ptosis, not a, a levator um, dys dystrophy. And that is why it's very important. Your preoperative evaluation is very important so that you can use the procedure um, accordingly. So in the acquired cases where it is more unpredictable, LPS plication or adjustable sutures is a better uh, procedure. And a congenital aponeurotic ptosis must be kept in mind. 
I just go quickly to prevent the lid fold and abnormalities. You must mark the crease before infiltration and match it with the other eyes in, in unilateral, especially when you're doing an LPS. And you must uh, make a lid fold suture when you're closing. Take a bite through the skin and the stump of the LPS so that you can get a good dynamic lid fold. And in severe ptosis, you must excise some skin muscle so that you don't get an overhanging lid fold. The prevention of lag of thalamus and exposure is the most important. The patients need to be counseled and explain the need for frequent lubricants, avoiding drafts. Um, you must check the bells. The frost suture can be kept for longer if there is a, a seemingly um, uh, the bells is not good or sometimes it goes into an inver inverse bells. And squeezing exercises and lubricants must be explained to the patient. We cannot get an exposure keratitis. It is completely unacceptable. So to summarize, avoiding the complications and of ptosis surgery, a very careful pre-op evaluation, planning. So 50% of the surgery is in your head. You must plan before you actually uh, go into the uh, OR. A meticulous surgery and monitoring post-operative is most important. And in case you do get the complications, assess. Keep the cornea uh, protected and don't hesitate to go in and correct it. Thank you.